new topic, new section of the chapter, but it's, it's not new, all right? We're still going to draw free body diagrams. We're still going to draw all the forces acting on that free body diagram, acting on that object, all right? And where some of the force equals mass and acceleration. Right, still, some of the force equals mass and acceleration. But y'all know that I like to define my axes in the, or de, yeah, define my axes according to the acceleration. So when you see something traveling in a circular path or a curved path, if there's some radius of curvature, right? If you see something traveling on a curved path, then I would sum the forces. So instead of summing the forces in X, Y, Z, wouldn't you sum the forces in the normal direction equals m a normal sum the forces tangential direction equals m a tangential uh, and sometimes if we're in 3d or, or just that other direction i'll call it z All right and y'all know what the normal acceleration is v squared over rho y'all know what the tangential acceleration is that that's the the speeding up slowing down speeding up slowing down acceleration and then maybe there was some other dimension maybe it's accelerating maybe it's not remember that the normal direction and the normal acceleration is into the curve right make sure that normal direction is into the curve so define your axes right and this is what i like to do. visualize the circular path okay probably it's either going to be like a horizontal circle right right maybe a horizontal circle or it's like a vertical circular path but visualize the circle and make sure you define your normal direction into the curve, into the curve. So uh, normal direction is into the curve. The tangential direction is in the direction of the velocity, in, in the direction of the path. And then the other direction, let's just say it's perpendicular to both normal and tangential. Perpendicular to both normal and tangential. All right, so free body diagram, some forces of mass times acceleration, and then that will lead us to maybe the acceleration, lead us, maybe we need the velocity and the V squared over rho, you know, that, that will kind of lead us to solve for the unknown. Now, don't go drawing forces that aren't really there, okay? I don't know how you were taught in physics, all right? All right, let's say you're driving in a car, right? Driving down the road in a car and you're, you turn to the left. You're going in a, on a curved path to the left. What happens? You kind of feel like you have to lean to the right, okay? But there's no force pushing you to the right, okay? So don't try to draw any forces like a centrifugal force. That's not a real force. That's a fictitious force. If you want to, if you want to say that your car is not, not going around a curve, then you say, okay, well, I've got a centrifugal force pushing me to the right. But we're going to say we are going around a curve, uh, so don't add any forces that aren't really there, okay? Uh, so, you know, when you're driving, driving in a car, if you turn to the left, you kind of feel like you're going to the right, but there's no force pushing you back. If you're in a car and you start accelerating, I don't know, sometimes it kind of feels like you're getting pushed back, but there's no force pushing you back. Uh, it's just that the seat is accelerating you forward okay so only draw the forces that are really touching your object plus weight don't forget about weight 
So only draw forces that are, what is my object touching? What does it feel from anything it's sitting on, standing on, you know? So draw those forces. Don't draw any fictional uh, centrifugal forces, okay? But then don't forget about weight. I forget about that sometimes, okay?